Hi there. I picked up a lovely four-stroke engine the other day, and I tell you what, they don't get much smaller than this. Not the smallest I know, but they don't come much smaller. And this is an OS FS26. And I've got a really nice plane that this is destined for. Now, the, be the, the engine hadn't been looked after particularly well, and the bearings were a little bit gummy and a little bit rusty. I got it second hand and I always check inside with second hand engines because you don't know what horrors await you. So I've stripped this engine and as you can see I've got all the components here nicely cleaned up and ready to go back together. Now I've got myself some new seals to go around top and bottom of the rocker covers uh, or, or sorry the push rod covers and I've got myself a couple of Brand new uh, Japanese bearings, right size, to go back into the crankcase. Now, I thought it would be really good to do a video and show you how I set the timing on a four-stroke, an OS, a small OS four-stroke like this. It can be a little bit tricky and you can damage it if you're not careful. It's okay putting the, the, the crankshaft back in but you have to be so careful when you put the, the camshaft back in that you don't damage it and you get that timing just right. So I'm going to put the bearings back uh, or, or the, put the bearings on the crank, put the crank back in and then I'll show you how I, I do the timing. Now if you're interested in how I put the bearings in, have a look in the description below and there'll be a link to a video I've done before showing how I put bearings into engines. I'm not going to cover that now because I've done it before. So Now, there are four basic things that we have to uh, consider that are, uh, to get the timing uh, done just right. The first one is that the, um, the big end, the camshaft, needs to be at top dead centre. So, the, 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 yeah, the big end, the crank pin, needs to be right at the top of its cycle. And there's a really easy way to hold that there without any effort while we're doing the timing. Now, a lot of the bigger OS engines and the newer ones have a T on the prop driver. This one doesn't, doesn't have any kind of marking to indicate on the prop driver where top dead center is. There's nothing, nothing on there at all. But the way we're going to do this is how I did previously with a Sato uh, 56 timing to show how I did that. And basically I'm going to use an elastic band and that is going to go into the cylinder. Now I'll tell you what, I'll just focusing, focus in on that a bit better. Now you can see if I rotate the crankshaft and you can see the, uh, the big end there, the, uh, the crank pin. Now, as I said, we need to hold that at top dead center, top of the stroke. And we're gonna use an elastic band to do that. And this is a technique I just showed recently on a uh, Sato engine. And what we do is we pull it up with an elastic, look, hook the elastic band around it, pull it tight, and just wrap that once well, I suppose it depends on the length of your elastic band, but just wrap that around the, uh, the top of the cylinder. Now, that now is held at top dead center, and if we try and move it, it will just spring back to top dead center. So that is being held there. Obviously, if we hold the prop driver and turn it while we're doing the timing, we can, we can set it off from top dead center. So we need to be careful. But that is now held nice and, and, and steady at top dead center. Now, as far as the timing, the mark on the, uh, the camshaft gear, on the helical gear, should be in line with the push rods. So to be able to line up the timing correctly, we need to be able to see the dot. It is really hard to see. And once you actually put it in the, uh, the, the crankcase housing, it is going to be dark. It's going to be quite hard to see. So what I've actually done is put a very small white mark on the, uh, on the dot there. I've, the, the dot is really, really small, and I can't see that 
without something to make it brighter. And what I did is I put a very, very small amount of Tipex onto that dot, wiped it off from around the dot, and it's just filled the recess. And now you can see that that is quite easily visible. It's the minutest, smallest amount of, of Tipex. I know it's not good to introduce anything to our engines that shouldn't be there, but I honestly believe something that small is not going to make a difference. It will soon be burnt off and disappear, and I don't think Tipex is particularly abrasive. I don't know the properties of Tipex, I must admit, but I think that is so small it's not going to make a difference, but it will allow us to get the timing correct. So the issue we have is caused by the gearing which transfers the direction of rotation 90 degrees from the crankshaft into this camshaft here. Now we've got the spiral gear on the crankshaft and this helical gear on the camshaft. But we can't line it up the camshaft as to exactly where we want it in the crankcase in line with the followers and then just push that in and expect it to stay where it is. Because of this helical gear and the spiral gear, we get a certain degree of rotation in the gearing, in this camshaft here, which will put the timing out. So we need to account for that uh, when we put the camshaft in. So it needs to be slightly to the one side of where we want it, so slightly forward. And you can just see how that rotates, look, as it slides in. So as we put this camshaft in, we just need to account for that rotation so it ends up in the correct position rather than starting in the correct position. Hopefully you can see, see that degree of rotation there. Well, the final issue we have is how we get the camshaft with these lovely polished ends here which fit into the, the bronze bushes how we get that into the um, crankcase housing and position it so that it's lined up correctly with the gear, the uh, spiral gear on the camshaft. Now, I I've seen with horror, I might add, people doing this, I've seen videos of people doing this with a pair of long nose pliers and they're holding this bearing surface or just as bad the cam surface and actually pushing that in there. And it just, as I say, fills me with horror, the, the thought of, of gripping this lovely smooth surface which fits into that bronze bush there. Because if we damage this surface, it's gonna just rip this bearing to shreds. So we need a method whereby we can maneuver, position with a fair degree of dexterity this camshaft and locate it onto this spiral gear. Now, the solution that I find for that is a simple piece of fuel tubing. Put away your long nose pliers. Please, please don't use long nose pliers. It's just risking damaging your engine. So we just push that onto that polished surface there and that allows us to turn and to move the, uh, the cam as necessary. And we can see here we've got our tiny little white dot, which, uh, if I can focus, I'll get the camera to focus. Yeah, we've got the tiny little white dot there facing us, and that just allows us to put this into position and rotate it as necessary. And if it's wrong, then we can take it out and put it back in again. No need to grip this and risk damaging it with a pair of a pair of long nose pliers. And once we've actually got that located in place like that, we just need uh, a wooden stirrer or something similar like that, wooden nylon, and we'll just put that in, hold it against the uh, the gear, and we can just pull off the hose or the the, the fuel pipe. And there is a really good method of doing it without risking damage to, uh, to the, uh, the bearing surfaces, which, or the, the hard surfaces which run in the bearings, which will ruin our engines. I, I don't know where I would get replacement parts for this engine.
Right, well now we've seen the issues that we need to deal with, the four, four main issues and how to overcome, how to overcome them. It's time to, uh, to get this engine built up, get this cam gear in correctly timed. So the first thing we did, we put the elastic band on, band on to get the, uh, the crank pin at uh, a top dead center there. Now we've got our camshaft and we have to find the mark. Yep, there's our tiny little white mark still visible. Now I'm not putting in the ball bearing in this end just yet. I will put that in last once I've done the timing. So I'll put on my bit of fuel hose and as we said, we can still see that little white dot. Now, we must at this stage put the bearing in the back end of this um, uh, camshaft. If we don't do it now, we won't get another chance, not without taking the camshaft out. So I am gonna put on just a little drop of oil, just to help hold that, uh, that bearing in place. Because the last thing we want really is for it to be uh, is for it to be dropping out. So I will put the bearing in. There we go, just picked it up. Just give that a wipe. Now, bearing in, we've got the camshaft on the, um, on the hose, the, uh, the silicon fuel tubing, and we need to line the dot up with the cam gear. Now this may take several goes, there we go. Now I would say that was perfect first time. Now I don't know whether the camera can actually see that. Hopefully you can see that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and just move it a tooth back because I want to make sure, yeah, I've moved it one tooth anti-clockwise and that is definitely out of line. So I'm just covering myself here just to make sure that I'm getting this perfectly lined up. Yep, too far back, just right and too far forward. So it's very easy to manipulate using the, uh, the piece of hose. Now hopefully that shows up. It is very difficult to see. You might have to just uh, trust me on that. So now I'm going to use my wooden stirrer. I'm going to hold that in place. And there we go. Pulled that off. And now I'm going to put a little bit of oil just to hold that bearing in place. And now we're going to have to try and put this bearing in without dropping it. Ah, there we go. Spot on. Hopefully you can see that. I do apologise if this isn't showing up very well. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the, uh, on the bronze bearing. I didn't oil the bear bearing at the back, but I will put plenty of oil in um, when I uh, put the, the cam followers in. There we go. And now we can just put in the screws and we have our timing nicely done. Well, as you can see, there's a few simple steps you can take to make sure you get the timing absolutely spot on with these lovely, lovely little four stroke engines, which are a little bit constricted when you're, when you're trying, to, trying to get the timing right. So all that's left now for me is to build this up and get this little engine purring. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.